Good morning and welcome to Lincoln Park and Linwood United Methodist Churches, the home edition. If you are joining us on Facebook, please do take a moment to comment and say hello so that we'll know that you're here. We would like to respond to you and it, it won't interrupt anything because after all it is social media. If you are not on our email list, we want to encourage you to join because we share news about the two churches that way. And uh, we hope to have some news to share soon. We'll talk a little bit later about our reopening. We're not quite there yet, but that's how we will let people know about it. If you would like to be on our email list, then drop us a comment here. We'll get back in touch with you. Don't leave your personal contact information online, of course. Drop us an email, call us, go to our website at lincolnparkmethodist.org. Even send us something by postal service. We will get you connected. The work of the church continues, of course, and so if you would like to give toward that work, we have four ways that you can do so. You can go to holston.org slash church offering. There you can designate which of the two churches you would like your offering to go to. You can send a check in the mail, and we have addresses up on the screen for that. Lincoln Park has a link through PayPal where you can participate in this way, or you can set up through your bank to make a, an automatic withdrawal to either church. We encourage you to take part in worship this way because it makes a difference to our communities, especially since our work continues even in these difficult times. Details are on our webpage at lincolnparkmethodist.org or get in touch with me or with Deborah Rogers. In any case, we are glad that you are here. We hope that you will give us an opportunity to get to know you so that we can serve you in community, and we look forward to meeting you in person someday. A few announcements as we're getting started this morning. Remember that for your friends and neighbors who are not able to connect to Facebook, we have a sermon by phone service. We would like to encourage you to share that phone number. It is 865 205-9183, and you can hear the current sermon. Generally, we get that up within about 10 minutes after we end our Sunday morning services. Please do share that and uh, make that resource available to those that you care about. We like to pray for each other, and we would like to invite you to participate in that. You can make your prayer request confidentially through our website, uh, call the church phone, call my phone, but we have set up a special email address to make it easy to share those. You can send email to prayers at lincolnparkmethodist.org, and we will be happy to include you in our prayers. A little reminder that we have a Facebook group that goes beyond our Facebook page, and the Facebook page is a good place to find out news about the church, but it's sort of like our front porch, and the Facebook group is like our kitchen table where we can sit around and visit with each other. Drop us an instant message, send us an email, let us know that you'd be interested in that, and we will get you connected. We mentioned about the reopening a little while ago. Honestly, we had hoped to be reopened by July 12th, which is when this is going up. But uh, unfortunately, uh, numbers of COVID-19 cases are spiking in Knoxville and Knox County. It is to the point that we got attention from three federal agencies. And so we decided that it was best to make sure that we could not become a source of the spread of infection to put that off for a little while. We are looking at probably early to mid-August at this point, just to make sure that as John Wesley urged us historically, do no harm. This morning, we will sing to God be the glory. It is number 98 in the United Methodist hymnal. The words will appear on your screen, wherever you are. We invite you to join in singing from the heart.
In September 2019, a woman named Maya Autry, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, climbed over a fence into the lion enclosure of the Bronx Zoo and taunted the lions, waving at them and basically daring them to attack her. She was fortunate. Nothing happened to her, and she wound up getting arrested for it. But it could have been really bad. And certainly there have been other incidents like that that have not turned out well. Most of us have sense enough to understand signs and fences and lines that say, do not cross here, danger, high voltage, those kind of things. But some of us have some problems with that. There are places that are safe and places that are dangerous. We even know some people build houses in questionable places. Sometimes they show up on the news. In fact, you can see here some dangerous places that actually put their residents in danger as cliff faces collapsed and other things went wrong. The world is a dangerous place, thanks to decisions that Adam and Eve made and that we continue to make. The reality is we can't change the whole world, but we can change where we choose to live. And Paul kind of talks about that in our reading for today. The scripture is from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And it says, So now there isn't any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. God has done what was impossible for the law, since it was weak because of selfishness. God condemns sin in the body by sending his own son to deal with sin in the same body as humans who are controlled by sin. He did this so that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Now, the way we live is based on the spirit, not based on selfishness. People whose lives are based on selfishness think about selfish things. But people whose lives are based on the spirit think about things that are related to the spirit. The attitude that comes from selfishness leads to death, but the attitude that comes from the Spirit leads to life and peace. So the attitude that comes from selfishness is hostile to God. It doesn't submit to God's law because it can't. People who are self-centered aren't able to please God. But you aren't self-centered. Instead, you are in the Spirit if, in fact, God's Spirit lives in you. If anyone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, they don't belong to Him. If Christ is in you, the Spirit is your life because of God's righteousness, but the body is dead because of sin. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your human bodies also through His Spirit that lives in you. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so we can see that Paul is telling us there is a place of safety. It's not one we could have made ourselves, but because of Jesus, there is such a place, and we can choose to be in that place of safety or not. In fact, in last week's lesson and last week's uh, scripture, we looked at Romans chapter 7, and we saw there where Paul was talking about the helplessness of trying to do good on our own. The nature of faith that Paul talks about in Romans 6 and 7 and 8 and really throughout the whole book of Romans, the nature of faith is not simply agreeing to something. That might be like looking at a place of safety and saying, yep, look safe. I believe that's a safe place. But unless we put ourselves in that place, we're not going to experience that safety. When Paul talks here about faith, he is talking about faith meaning being literally in Christ Jesus. It's not simply putting faith in Christ. It's being in Christ. In fact, one commentator said about this, the faith about which Paul is talking is much more than intellectual assent to propositions about Jesus Christ. It is more than loyalty to Christ. It is more than following Christ. 
just as the spirit is an ecosystem, that is a location in which Paul believes we can live, as he talks about in Romans 8 and verse 9, so is Christ. So in this passage, Paul is telling us that we should open our eyes to the gift of a new place, to not take it for granted, to not treat it as what some call cheap grace, but to recognize the gift that we've been given. When I was young, I began working at a newspaper in my hometown, Trenton, Tennessee, over in West Tennessee. The editor had not been there for very long when I came there. I was enthusiastic about being able to work with these people, but obviously there was history there. The newspaper is an old paper going back well into the mid-1800s, and evidently there had been some complaining, I guess, because people didn't like the way the new editor was doing things. All I know is that I saw on the bulletin board one day a poem, and I wish I had kept a copy of the poem. I cannot quote the poem directly, but the gist of it was when people say we didn't used to do it that way. And again, it was repeated. We didn't used to do it that way. It wound up with saying, we ain't here no more. Things are different. And we see that in this passage as well, not about newspaper editors, of course, but that things are different. Somebody different, somebody new is in charge. Paul even uses that phraseology about being ruled by sin or death. And as that commentator said, believers have been transported to a new place where life and not death is in charge and where there is no condemnation because sin is not the master. Who's in charge? We have temptation, yes, but there's somebody different in charge. In fact, the whole book of Romans tells us the heart of the gospel. Paul isn't saying, you're safe now, do as you please. Rather, you're safe now, recognize your blessing and appreciate it. Thanks be to God that there is a place of no condemnation. Now, I've seen it said that it's ironic that followers of Jesus, who should know better than anyone the relief of there being no condemnation, sometimes are most likely to be condemning others. And so as followers of Jesus, our place is no more to condemn than does Jesus. So let us not condemn others, but seek to show them the way to this same place of no condemnation. Would you bow with me, please? Father, thank you for a place of safety. May we never take it for granted. Though the conditions of this world remain dangerous, help us to appreciate the place of safety you have provided through Jesus. Help us to point the way so that none need perish. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. And as we go our way this week, I bid you go now in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.